So, 2020, it's been the fucking shit. But if there was one positive thing during this year, it was, of course, the Doctor Who action figures. They've basically sort of had a comeback, I guess you could say. Like, for the past couple of years, we've not... Like, we've had just repaints and maybe retweaks and a little bit of tooling. For example, the Talons of Enchanted Fourth Doctor had a new um, shirt, tie and waistcoat sculpt. But we've not really had anything major and significant. Last year was good though, don't get me wrong, we got big finish figures. Um, some new sculpts, nice TARDISes and great army builder sets, for example, uh, the Zontaran and Cybermen, Sovereign Nemesis sets. Um, but this year has seen a huge range of variety and it's been bloody amazing. So, hello there everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I will be listing my top 10 Doctor Who action figures, sets, items for 2020. Um, so, this is my New Year's Eve special. So, um, whenever you'll be watching this video, which if that's today, tomorrow, 10 years time, whatever, um, I hope you in, uh, you all enjoy this video. Um, I was actually inspired by um, Perry Smith 11. Um, well, sort of, I had the idea, but he's. I watched, he uploaded his video last night, and he's made me really want to record this. And of course, I'm doing it last minute. I don't even know why I've done that, I don't have a watch. Um, so yeah, let's get on with the list. So, at number 10, we have History of the Daleks Set Free, The Chase Collector Set. Now, this is a great army builder set, but also it's re-released a really rare figure, which is the Chase Guard, um, which is back in the day, um, it was legendary. This thing sold out so quickly and it's always been kind of a legendary Doctor Who figure mainly because, because it was the closest thing we could get to a Peter Cushion movie Dalek. Obviously, something happened this year significant. And um, we have this lovely redone uh, chase drone with a brighter silver and a pair of blue eye rings and dome lights and um, darker hemispheres, which I don't think are accurate, but I'm going to be honest, I don't really care because I've got the original chase set anyway. And if you put the more straight gun on this, this makes for a fucking awesome Power of the Dark drone. It's also got the smaller pupil as well, which is really cool. Um, it's a nice set. I mean, I didn't when it was announced, I didn't really care about it. Um, but having it in hand, it's a lot better. And also, this one doesn't feel as cheap as the other Dalek um, sets feel with B&M. So it feels like they put a bit more money. I feel like they put more money into this simply because there wasn't much to put into it anyway, if that makes sense. Like, they didn't need to really change anything and... You know, so they've obviously, I guess, just maybe put a bit more weight into the plastic. So, but it's a lovely set. Don't really have much more else to say. And yes, that is number 10, the Chase Collector set. At number 9, we have History of the Daleks set 1. Um, the Daleks. <laughs> um, again, this is such a lovely set. Great army build, uh, builder set. Um, the... <laughs> There's something so vintage and kind of sacred about these. Like, they feel so retro and 60s and sci-fi and bloody cool. Um, and they're just lovely. They've got scuffing on the bases you won't be able to see from here. Um, and they've got um, a much brighter and better done silver. Um, and the smaller people. And the frosted dome lights. It's just these little touches that are making it better. And the lines on the back. I love how personal that feels like. It makes it feel like it's a prop. It's been some poor actor sitting in there waiting for their cue. Like, oh, could Dalek 2 move over to that control panel, please? You know, it just makes that feel a bit more personalised. And, you know, it's just something nice and cool. Um, and again, it's a great armor builder set. And that's number nine. The Daleks set. At number eight, we have 
the fifth doctor and TARDIS from the visitation now again i didn't really care about this when it was announced um this was my least favorite of the classic stuff um from that wave but um when i got it this is my second favorite set of the that entire lot so i think that shows you how much the october wave i was going to do a video on why they're not as bad as i thought um i think the october wave they're better when you get them in hand definitely um we've got a lovely new peter davison figure which um has a redone face which the more crisper and sharper it looks a lot more like peter davison and um it's hatted so obviously that's a good chance for people to get a hatted fifth doctor like me even though i have the planet fire set one but that's in box i'm never opening that um it's just nice to have a sort of different one on the shelf and um the jumper's been redone as well the pattern is more accurate um and the coat normally they paint them this time they've just left the base color i guess sculpted it in that color it looks a lot better in my opinion uh this is probably my favorite peter davison figure um although i do really like the resurrection of the daleks one but i just i love this one to bits as well and the tardis is absolutely beautiful um, it doesn't have that glossy, waxy texture to it. Um, it has a bit more of a matte finish, which um, just makes it feel, um, I guess, sort of less cheap. And there's just, yeah. I mean, it's, sorry about the noise. Um, it's just a lovely TARDIS. Like, you just have it sort of sitting on your shelf or a desk TARDIS or even, it makes for stunning photographs, that's fine. Um, and it's just a nice stacked roof 80s box. It is really lovely, this, to be fair. It's a lovely TARDIS. And um, I think it's one of the more accurate ones. So, yeah, that is number eight. At number seven, we have History of the Daleks, set four. The Daleks Master Plan set. Oh, I love this to bits because finally, the Master Plan Supreme has been re-released and he's very glorious um he's one of my favorite dalek figures and just looks so cool and i love the jet black color and again the paler eye rings and the paler dome lights and the lighter midsection just makes it feel very 60s and striking just sort of no power in this universe can stop the daleks um and the blue with the black is such an attractive color scheme and he just oh, he looks very cool um, and in the flame for a dark, better than the original, the redone, much brighter silver and the paler blue spheres and even the, the flame for arm stays up now, at least with, um, uh, the, on my original one, it always fell down. Um, but again, this is more sort of nice and prim and proper and yeah, he's very, very cool this and if you put a plunger in it'll make for a great um regular flame for not not flame for um drone dark so that is number seven at number six we have the claws of axos cut to set 1971 um unit unit 1971 now the main reason why i love this is because well right the brigadier not the main reason why people are buying it unless you don't have a clause of access brigadier then that's great for that i prefer the weathering on the body and he has more accurate gloves um you may notice these ones are black now that's because i've swapped them i put the brown gloves on the original one simply because i prefer the face on that one and i can't swap the heads because um um, one's a peg and one's a plug so it won't work so that's why he's got the buttons um but the weathering on the body is really good the paint job on the face not so much um and benton and yates obviously <sighs> but the fact that we have the complete unit family now uh, all we need for 70s campaigns is les shaw that is literally it but the fact we've got the six main ones, 
John Pertwee, Katie Manning, Roger Delgado, Nicholas Courtney, John Levine and Richard Franklin as figures. It's amazing. And uh, Richard and John were very happy about these. Um, Richard was saying on his Twitter, like, how you can have a little Yates God in your home. And obviously John, the person he is, he was obviously so happy about this. Um, the, the, the thing is as well, John Levine's a person who grew up in sort of very poor conditions. Um, he wasn't popular at school. He was ill. He didn't have very great education. Um, but he obviously he didn't he didn't want to disappear and be nobody. He wanted to be something. Um, and obviously he became one of the in my opinion one of the best characters ever in Doctor Who. And I just I, I bet he couldn't imagine that he would have a little figure of himself. Um, but great sculpting, the likenesses are fantastic on these. Um, really nice um, torso piece with a nice sort of stony grey wash. The guns aren't the best, um, but if you want to solve that, I should just cut the scope off the the top. Um, apparently, there was gonna, there was going to be more accurate guns, but they just weren't finished in time. So that's why when it came to Tower of Zygon set, they um. Um, give them the more accurate ones. I've just had a thought. If we get revised sets early next year, which I hope we don't, um, well, next year, you know, in like March time, uh, I could see them redoing the guns, but who knows? Anyway, that's just a bit more for personal reasons. Like, I just, oh, I love this set so much, but it couldn't quite make the top five. So on to the top five, we have at number five, the Cole Hill School clutch set. Now, the Ace, much better than before, although, well, it's better for the face aspect. I prefer the badges and the sort of detail on the original because some are missing on the B&M one, which is understandable. Um... So I've basically swapped the head, I've put the new one on the old body, um, but just the face stuff, but the face looks absolutely so fouled, it looks so much better than the original, just like, at first when the pictures were revealed, I was like, hmm, does it, is that so fouled? When you get it in person, that is so fouled, 100%, it looks amazing. And then obviously she comes with her RPG launcher. Uh, I know a lot of people were annoyed it wasn't the baseball bat, which ideally I would have preferred as well. But it's still cool. Obviously, you can take off the uh, rocket and put it on. And you can pose her with it, ready to kick Imperial Dalek um, ass. So, the Imperial Dalek, um, a lot better than the original. Um, it's still not accurate. The skirt should be steeper. It should be more to more taller, but mm, it's fine. Just I hope one. If there's one figure I want character options to redo, it's the Imperial Dalek. Um, the eye they've also done it black, which is not accurate. And um, there's also the mesh, which doesn't really bother me if I'm honest. Um, the plunger's a new sculpt as well. Um, it's a lot more crisp and better than the original. The original was very sloppy and not crisp. Um, this very nice. And uh, Imperial Daleks shouldn't have scuffs in that. They should be 100% pristine because they were brand new props. Um, I'm not a big fan of the colour scheme for Imperial Daleks, but I think when you look at this as its own thing, it looks really nice. I think they look better as merchandise pieces and um, even replicas. Um, but they just look a bit tacky on screen, I think. But they're still a nice design, you know, nonetheless. I have a weird opinion of them. But obviously, um, great for army building as well. I bought three Cole House School sets for Imperials. So yeah, that is number five. The Cole House School. That's a set. Now, number four, we have the second Doctor and TARDIS from the War Games. Now, the Trout and Figure. Obviously, this is people's first chance to get a regular second Doctor figure from his actual era. 
because lots of people only um well probably only had the three doctors one and i was one of those um folk and i obviously they released the andrew gum second doctor last year but to have a proper one is really nice um the likeness especially on this looks fantastic it looks so much like patrick Trown. i'm really this set, I really bought it for the Trenton figure, but the Talgis will go on to that. Um, he's also got the little rip, and his uh, trouser yeah, is me. Um, <laughs> and he's got the weathering on the coat, and he just, he looks like a lovely figure. This Patrick Trenton. Absolutely wonderful. The Talgis. Um, oh my god, this is my favourite B&M Talgis um, that's been released. The the sexy look of it, the, the lamp sculpt is amazing with the square lamp and the circular um, lantern with the four struts, beautiful. And also how three sides are uh, white text on black, then the front is black text on grey. And obviously the doors open. And the weathering, like the sort of grey... Just like, because uh, right now it looks like a grey TARDIS. It's a very, 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 very dark blue, this TARDIS. And just the whole sexies look of it is, oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, this TARDIS. I love it. Um, and it just looks like a cool little, little, little filming miniature they might have had. And um, sometimes it even looks black, which is um, crazy. Obviously, if you have the second Doctor... Um, black and white figure, it will look excellent next to this. I don't sadly, but um, it's still brilliant. This TARDIS, nonetheless, and I absolutely love it. So, on to the top three. These are the three best um, of 2020, in my opinion. And yeah, now it wouldn't be a top 10 2020 um, figure set video without these boys that took the internet by a storm the fan base twitter the jungles of mechanist collective set <sighs> if someone told me that we would be getting movie dogs especially during this shit year i would have thought you're fucking mental but oh, thank god for loopholes obviously these guys make an appearance in the um the chase as background darks you have a drone I can actually recreate that right now you have a drone leading two down a jungle and because of that we now have movie darks um but often they don't have claws but it uh, doesn't matter the bright blue base, I love it. The blue tinge, the red dome lights, the eye, just oh, it looks so cool, and they look so sorry, they look so striking. And the fact you get two as well is amazing. Also, this was character options only, exclusive, uh, limited to five thousand, uh, not available anymore, sadly. Um, but I have a slight feeling they might re-release these one day. Who knows? But. These are something special, definitely. These are magnificent and they just look so cool. Um, and just classic 60s Doctor Who. And yeah, that is number um, three on my list. At number two, we have the Companions of the Fourth Doctor character set. Sarah Jane Smith. I can't believe we have a figure. I can't believe it took them this fucking long to do a figure of Sarah Jane from the classic series, but here we are. Obviously based on her appearance from Genesis of the Daleks, uh, reusing the Martha Jones Series 3 body, which works extremely well. Um, it just looks fantastic. And the face likeness on this is absolutely spot on. This looks like Elizabeth Sladen. And <sighs> she just looks... She looks brilliant next to Harry and Tom, and it's the season 12 TARDIS crew just there. And, uh, and also, very well articulated, you can get brilliant poses out of this. And, uh, it's my favourite of the set. Just 
Sarah Jane Smith. Can't believe it. And then fucking Mary Tam. Romana won. Like, I expected Sarah one day and maybe Romana two, but I never thought we would get Romana one as a figure. The head sculpt is probably my favourite out of this set because, like, the side profiling and with the sort of hair flow at the back, like, that just screams Mary Tam. And you've also got the lovely pink jacket with the uh, white bobby. Um, obviously, it's a little bit inaccurate, but oh, who cares? We have a fucking figure of Mary Tam, which is just amazing. And she looks very striking and just, you know, sort of elegant on the shelf. And we've got a season 16 figure now, which is pretty cool. We've now got two, obviously, because uh, we've got the Power of Crow Romana. So, yeah. It's, again, it's such a great figure. And obviously, Romana too, based on her appearance from Destiny of the Daleks. With the feminine version of the fourth Doctor's outfit with the boots, the pink jacket and the lovely white scarf. Again, I'm just trying to fix a scarf. <laughs> Hold on. The likeness to um, Lala Ward. So good. It looks so much fucking like her. I love it. And she looks brilliant next to your um, Destiny 4th Doctor. Although she's a little bit short, I think. But, um, never mind. I actually done a custom recently of Romana 2 from state of decay and i think that should be lala's height and not this but doesn't matter um i'm just glad we've got a figure of lala ward and yeah it just it's so cool i love this set to this i don't have a favorite figure they're all really equally good in my opinion and it's my favorite b&m set from this year now number one some of you may be surprised by it um, my top one thing is new series, and it is the Reconnaissance Dalek. The reason why I love this figure is because it shows that character options are still capable of great things. We are still capable of making great figures, great sets, great everything. Just... I can't believe we have the record. Like I never, I, I thought we would never get a Hulu figure. It's a completely brand new sculpt. Oh, that's it. There's no parts reused. This is so unique, and you can tell a lot of money and effort has went into this. Like it's the thing, character options doing repaints and that. And obviously not the best thing ever, but it just shows they might give us some shit. They might make they, they might make a mistake. They do this. And blow it out of the water. Like, we, we have a fucking reconnaissance Dalek to put alongside Jodie Whittaker. That's amazing. The fact we have this is just a, a star to me. And also, it's the most articulated Dalek figure you've got the dome, the eye, the claw, the gun, the waist, the wheels, and a hatch. Because they included something they didn't need to. The Dalek Mutant. Like, I would have been just happy enough with that, but the fact they just, they went the extra mile and they gave us, the, they didn't need to do the Mutant, but they did. <sighs> it's amazing. And it's really well sculpted and looks very alien and sort of the tentacles just sort of slop around and oh, it looks fantastic. And this is my favourite Dark Mutant design, so I'm really happy we have it as a sort of accessory. And obviously, you can just plonk it in the mid section, close up the hatch, and it is ready to exterminate and take down the army. So yeah, uh, the sculpting is lovely, it's spot on, there's nothing wrong with this. I think though the mids is a bit too fat around here, but that's also for the mutant purpose, so I'm fine with it. Because um, it's that playability, obviously. This is a better version of the Dalek mutant reveal figure from 2005. Like, and the, the fact that, like, you know, I guess you could say, like, kids are getting these Doctor Who figures and enjoying that aspect of them. Because, like, for example, when me, Dan, Alfie, and Luke were growing up in the 2000s, you know, the action figures, you know, that Dark Mutant Reveal figure was, like, the best one ever. 
and like you know he took off the hatch it was inaccurate but he didn't care that was just such a cool thing this is better though like <laughs> the fact that we have this you know it's just it just feels like a better version of that old mutant reveal dark and I absolutely love it and i'm hoping that they'll reuse and re-sculpt parts for the black Daleks from Revolution. And what I would love is, I would love a Capture Online exclusive, a two pack of two of the Revolution Daleks, but one with the blue lights and one with the red lights. I think that'd be so cool. Or, even though it's probably never going to happen, a light switching feature, which I think would be very cool. Um, but I'm hoping they'll reuse and resculpt parts for the black Dalek. I think we will get it. And yeah. Um, and it, people have been saying that the reason why they've done this hatch feature is because in the Revolution of the Daleks trailer you can see Jack Robertson and like two other folk looking into the hatch of the Dalek. So people are saying that's the reason why they've done it with this, which who knows? Maybe they have, but we shall see. But that, just because, this is why it's number one, because it shows character options are still capable of great things. And there you go, this is my top 10 Doctor Who figure items, sets, whatever, for 2020. Um, I just want to end this video by saying thank you so much for all the support you guys have given me this year. Um, because I've came back to the channel properly um, after I went away for... How long did I go away for? Um... It was about a year and a half I went and then I, I came back um, it's actually been uh, nearly a year since I've done my I'm back video and um, unboxed season 26 and the support this year has been absolutely lovely I've gotten some great comments can I just say as well the comments I get I read all of them if I don't like the comment or don't reply to it or don't love it I'm not ignoring you I'm just busy with something else so don't worry, I'm still going to reply to everyone's comments. So, um, But I read all your comments and thank you all so much. It's amazing, it means the world to me. And it's been a nice little positive thing during this absolutely fucking shit year. So, let's just all hope 2021 will be better than this year. And um, obviously we have Doctor Who tomorrow with Revolution of the Daleks, so I hope you all enjoy it. Um, I am looking forward to it. And I will probably do a review for it. I'm not too sure because this is a New Year's Eve special. I kind of want to do, kind of want to do, kind of want to do a New Year's Day special about um, Revolution of the Daleks. To sort of, you know, New Year's Eve special, New Year's Day special. So thank you all very much for watching. I will see you all soon, and see you on 2021. Happy New Year! And I need to get up to stop the video. Goodbye.